What up? This is Robert Ory. Ory, three pointer. There is it. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable! Oh, this guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from downtown. All right, all right. Call this episode 183 of the Big Shot Bob podcast. I know, man. We're sneaking in on 200. Yeah. We got to come up with a, a plan or something fun to do for our 200th episode. I, I know, of right? The Big Shot Bob podcast. Uh, B Dog Brandon Harper is in transit. Uh, he will join us here shortly. Uh, my name's Rob Jenners. That, of course, is seven time NBA champion and Disney VIP Robert Ory. <laughs> it's, it's like that time when I was coming home one time in a, a raisin truck. Uh, I'm, I'm flipped sorry. Over on a truck. Yeah, a truck full of raisins wow. flipped over on the freeway. <laughs> When was this? What, what, I'm... this? This is about two months ago. Coming home, there was a raisin truck that flipped over. And the crazy part is, every, it seems like everybody records it. There's actually a video of the truck coming around the bend, and it took it too too fast. And then you can see it flip over, and this is all the raisins go over all over. It happened about like two months ago, and the freeway is still black from what all the raisins from all the were raisins like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know raisins could leave marks like that's that. That's a good one. Dude, I can't tell you the last time. Because that's an excuse nobody's going to believe. Sorry, a yeah. raisin truck flipped over. On, that's why yeah. I'm late. People are like, what? They're bullshit. What the hell are you talking make some shit up about a raisin truck flipping over? That's uh, fine. Yeah, no, that, what uh, the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. Where is he? He's out here somewhere, right? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, Josh Smith says, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, mm. and Josh Smith, by the way, that drop was Josh Smith talking about Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers on the sheet today. We're going to get to him in a little yeah. while. Um, yeah. we, got some, we got some stuff to go. I mean, basketball's back. Dude, we're in it, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, Preseason we are, is dude. here. Is it? I did, I did my first game. I was like, "Oh, you worked? Hold on. You're working? Yeah, I already worked one game? Oh shit, he's back at work, everybody. Yeah. Rob's working. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, Candace, is like, get then, your ass out this house and go do I know. something. And, and then I have to actually, um, I'm gonna have to do the show from Vegas because they you know the preseason game in Vegas. I have to go to Vegas. That's and awesome. Do, uh, cover the game. Of, the Lakers are playing. I love it, man. Uh, <laughs> what what game did you work? Did you work the Phoenix game? No, I worked the uh, Minnesota game. Minnesota game, okay. Yeah, yeah, with no no Carl Anthony Towns and no Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, Ant yeah, Man sitting out. Some on the sidelines. We, did, saw him, we saw had a Jewish. Close. Yeah, yeah, we saw a Jewish ran the side, and he sat on the sideline. He didn't play either. With it. his, his shoulder still messed up. Yeah, he's been he's been nursing yeah. that for a, for a minute. Um, yeah. But yeah, though they uh, it it was it was interesting to to finally see the moment where you had LeBron and Bronny. Yes. On the floor together. I, I mean, again, I think it, it's it's overhyped, and we've talked about it a ton, so we're not going to go too deep into it. But um, do you think that that he makes the roster, even if he's not like game day ready because of LeBron? Like, do you think that they're going to give him a pass here? I, I definitely think so. Okay. Um, because Christian, Wood, I do too. Christian Wood is not ready. Vando is not ready. So they're going to have that slot. And they're gonna slide him in that slot, yeah. then let him play, and then like send him down to the G League. Because if you you know, he's really you know, he's really not ready. And that's not me hating on him. No, no, no. And it that's just, not that yeah. this is no hate on the kid, but yeah. yeah. He's you can see it on the in his game and on the floor. Like yeah. he if he ran down that one block, and I thought that was a good mm-hmm. block on his part, but yeah. a lot of the fundamentals there yeah. you can tell how fast the NBA moves compared to what he's used to. Uh, correct. You know what I mean? uh, and, and a lot of times in practice, you let passes go through in practice. And like his his pass to me has been his one downfall, you know, because he thinks, oh, you're open. No, dude, you got to snap your passes. You got to get yeah. it there. And he's had like a lot of turnovers. And that's one of the things that you cannot have in the NBA game. So yeah. and, 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 it, and the G League is a way where he can get, you know, it ain't the same. I know a lot of people think the G League and the NBA is the same. It ain't. It's like, you know, the A team and the C team, let's be honest, because it's but it a runs big gap. Cl- it runs a little closer it, to the NBA speed of the game, though. And yeah, I, and a I, little bit I closer. really feel yeah. like you're you're 100% right, and that's yeah. what is throwing him, especially when he's trying to move the, move the basketball, is the mm-hmm. speed of defense. Yeah. I don't think he's just used to seeing guys come in from nowhere and snipe a pass out of your hands like that. Yeah, so. and, the, and the fact that people know how to, you know, 
play coy like oh i'm not paying attention now and they shoot the gap yeah, they gotta steal yeah, and they go and then yeah. bang they're running yeah and it's transition yeah. And, yeah, you know, I mean, and think about it, a lot of rookies i went through that my um first year you know you like okay do i want to make this pass and like and you hesitant and that that little bit of hesitant makes you, you know, makes that pass a little bit slower and gives the defense a chance to, to get the steal so can you quantify <laughs> and this is probably an unfair question but can you quantify how how much faster the nba is than for instance college well you, you got to think about it in college is you have great athletes in college, but now you have the greatest of the great. You know what I mean? And so now these guys who, who you're looking at in college, oh, we had a 6'10 defender who runs um, just like on a scale of 1 to 10, runs like a 6. Now you got a 6'10 defender who runs a 10, and you haven't seen that before yeah. because you're gauging everything on what you did in college. So you have to multiply everything times 2 or maybe 3 and say, okay, this guy's faster, this guy's quicker, this guy is way more athletic. That's why they're in the NBA, and these other guys are either overseas or at home working a 9-to-5. So right, yeah, it's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, I, I think I'm trying to remember who said it. Somebody said it on this show. It was a guest. Mm-hmm. It was like, imagine – the best player on one team is mm-hmm. every player on every team. <laughs> like, that's the difference, right? It's the like, yeah. oh, you know, uh, uh, Vandy's got that one guy, and George has got uh-huh. that one guy, and Bama's got that one guy. Well, now the whole team is all of those one guys. <laughs> that's and and, and sometimes that one guy is still not as good. No, and he's not the even the best that's... guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, I hope the kid succeeds. I really do. Me too. I, I want to I mean, like, I, I, and again, I got no hate for LeBron James, but mm, I want either. I want to see the kid do well, and I feel like, and I've said this before on this show, I feel like he's being kind of shoehorned into something because yeah. he's LeBron's kid, and I don't want to see him, his game or his career pay the price for the fact yeah. that we're trying to get him on the floor to play with his dad. Yeah. And you know, you don't, I, I you don't, don't want him think to be he's there, <laughs> right? And I don't yeah. think he's there. Yeah. But I think they're going to do everything they can to get him on yeah. the floor with LeBron, f- simply for the the views and the conversation and the narrative about uh, LeBron yeah. got to do it, and no one else has ever done it. But, yeah, and I think a lot of times you have to put a person in a position to succeed, and if he's not in a position to succeed, you don't want that to deter. His goal. You don't want that to, you know. Oh shit. Well, maybe I'm not good enough. You don't want that doubt to slip in because once that doubt slips in, you know, you're you finished. You know, okay, I'm done. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move on to something. Oh, I can make more money doing this or that. Yeah. So, I, I just want him to be in the best position to succeed, and that he realizes, yo, you're still young. You just turned twenty. Yeah. And you know, what I, mean? I think a lot of people forget that he just turned twenty. He should be st- technically. He should still be in high in, in college. You know. And he should be like going into his sophomore year of college, and and he just still he still has a, he still has a lot to go, and he's he has a talent. He's athletic now. Don't get me wrong; he's athletic as hell, but it's still gonna it's gonna take some talent to that to that athleticism, yeah. and it's gonna take some time to to groom that and for him to get ready for the NBA league. And that's something I think we all forget about the yeah. about the NBA in general. Even the most seasoned vets are in their twenties. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, we speak as a, as old men to go. Well, how do you not know this? How do you not think about this? And it's like they're kids. Yeah. They're kids. They're still kids. You know, you're in your twenties. You're still a kid, yeah. man. I give. And they always say you 20s. hit your prime at twenty six. Oh, you can hit your prime at twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight in the NBA. And I'm like, but yet then you get a guy like Dalton Connect who falls in the draft because he's twenty two yeah, years exactly. old. Oh, he's yeah. too old. Oh, he's too he's old. Too old. That's like 22. Yeah, yeah, forget it, man. He's going to be, yeah. Gonna, but from, always, uh, from a business perspective, when you look yeah. at numbers, 22 mm-hmm. is old. Yeah. But but it, but you got to think about they, it. But the whole thing about the NBA, they're so, so, oh, we need to develop players. We want to draft this kid because we can put our imprint on him and we can develop him. What if he doesn't develop? And now you don't pass on this bet who's already, you know, is developed and you can see his process. But now you got these head scratches. That you say, oh, we're gonna bring in and we're gonna try to develop these kids so they can learn our system. And okay, well, how do you know once you learn a system, why don't they go bye bye? Because they still young, but they can get three or four more contracts. And you yeah. know, I know it's getting tougher to lead teams, but some guys are like, fuck it, I'm out because the coach. And then the coach is like, oh shit, he's out. Or the coach like he's gone because the player like I don't like him. It's either me or the coach. There's so many things that goes on now. Well, and it's a player controlled league now. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, you, it never was so. when you played. It was it was not this way, and now it is very much a player control league. Yeah, like we, these we, guys we, make we, a lot more decisions than you ever yeah. made. <laughs> it's funny. It was 
A, meaning one player control league when I play. Well, Jordan. <laughs> <made> Michael Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. Jordan made the rules. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And now it's like, fuck it, everybody's got the right mm-hmm. to just, yeah, to, to do yeah. it. And, but, I mean, that's all sports now. I mean, Jan, damn, we just saw it today, breaking news today. Yeah. The New York Jets fired Robert Sala. No, they yeah. didn't. Aaron Rodgers fired Robert Sala. <laughs> let's, not, let's not mince words. Aaron Rodgers showed that man the door because he wasn't going anywhere until Aaron Rodgers showed up. And then Aaron Rodgers pushed him on the sideline, and that was it. That was the that end was, of their relationship. That was funny. And they were done. Uh, and the me. Jets, the Jets, <laughs> I, I got, you know what? They're one of those teams where it's like, you got Aaron Rodgers. Great. You're still the Jets. Yeah. Hey, you got a great defense, but you're still the Jets. It's so funny. If you look at their defensive lineup, you're like, damn, this team going to be good. You're right. You can, and, and then you put Aaron <laughs> Rodgers under center, and you're like, okay, we might have something, but you're still the Jets. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, it slept Rock City right here. Oh, what, what is the dark cloud that's <laughs> looming over the Jets to make them just suck? They're the Jets. <laughs> They're the Jets. They do it all the time. They're the, it's just, oh, it's great. It's great to watch, man, from a distance. Um, I did want to talk about JJ real quick, too. Uh, our friends at DraftKings are back this week, so we'll talk about them oh, in a second cool. here. Um, love having them back on the show, and thank you for them to uh, for helping to sponsor this thing. Keep this thing going. Yes. But um, JJ's answer on Rui, I have the audio. I don't know if I want to play a little bit of it. It's kind of yeah. hard to hear. You know what I'm talking about when he was asked Yeah, because, Rui? you know, yeah, Brad Turner is, is my boy. Brad, and so okay, so Brad asked he was them, actually He was actually raised like, what, what happened? And it's like people don't know the backstory story. That JJ and Brad know each other, and, and JJ actually called Brad up and was like, you know, I, I didn't mean anything about it. It was like a little know, playful it, back and forth. It's blowing up more than we I, I yeah, anticipated. So, and, and I won't play the yeah. audio because the audio is garbage because yeah. it's from practice and there's just there's basketball yeah. in the background and just chirping and you can't. It's hard to hear. But JJ, he Brad asked him like, "What's the next step for Rui?" Mm-hmm. And JJ goes, "Well, you tell me." Mm-hmm. And Brad just kind of looked at me. and goes, "Well, you you're the one making the narrative about the next step. I'm not yeah. concerned about that. So you tell me what do you think is the next <laughs> step for him." Yeah. And then Brad's like, well, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, how's he going to affect? And then JJ's like, my next step is how's he going to affect winning on the team? What does yeah. his shot percentage look like? What is he getting in minutes? What is he doing while he's on the floor? That's mm-hmm. the stuff I care about. And for me, it was very easy when I watched the exchange. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's doing first take. Yeah. <laughs> like this, this isn't, this isn't a story. <laughs> JJ Redick is still doing first take in his head. Yeah. Like he's going to, yeah. he's going to be combative with the media because Literally, that's all he's done for the past few years is be yeah. combative and and be the the you know antagonize Stephen A. Smith into an yeah, argument. It, it's it's funny because because J because J J was you know he was like he said that and everybody was like well you know you're a coach now right and he like these are the questions you're gonna get like that's a that's the answer he gave B T was an answer. When you've lost seven games in a row and you're frustrated, oh, you, yeah, you that, just yeah, started yeah, yeah. the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it was really, really weird. BT was a little taken back by it, and you know JJ was like, "Oh, I mean it." The way it came off, but the crazy part about it is, you know, you talk about everybody looked at the way Rui played in the Olympics. He he had a good Olympics, and that's what Brad brought up. Yeah, yeah. And, Brad said, "Well, look at the way he played in the Olympics," and yeah. JJ's like, "Well, that's a completely different game. Exactly, it's a different setting. Exactly. It's a different scenario." That means you still like, oh, you're the number one option. You should play good on the team. And now when you come, when you did maybe the fourth, third, fourth, or fifth option, how are you going to, you know, keep your energy, keep that same focus when you're not the, the main guy? And that's the that's the thing about a lot of NBA players. When you watch them play on a team, you know, uh, and they're playing extremely well, and all of a sudden you throw them on a team with – a guy like LeBron and AD, you're like, oh, shit, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't have a fucking clue what I'm going to do. Well, I- I'm lost. You know, and 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 for me, I play. We play with a guy named Eldon Campbell. I remember. And we, yeah, yeah, and we knew if we ran the first two plays for Eldon, he he gets engaged and he's going to be performing, blocking shots. I mean, he gets engaged, but if you don't run a play for him, he's like, he starts looking around like, okay, <laughs> where am I? Butterflies for no yeah, reason. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and and that's and that's who Rui is to me. You have to run a play for Rui, and and it's not. It's and then people forget it's just one fucking play, maybe two plays. If you run that early in the game, he's engaged, and you let him go from there. Sure. And that's how a lot of guys are. You have to keep them engaged. You know, we call like when you have a big man run the floor, and you don't give it to him, and then all of a sudden that guy beats the guy who did. 
he getting the left because that big ain't blocking shock. He says, fuck you. <laughs> you just missed me on the on. So we call that giving a little sugar. You got to sweeten the pot for these bigs to play defense for you. And so they have to sweeten the pot for guys like Rui. And, and that way he'll stay engaged and he'll give you a better performance on the court. Good. Um, have you seen, before we go on to DraftKings, have you seen, uh, the, the you've, you've worked one game. Obviously we've had mm-hmm. a couple so far. Uh, early thoughts? On what you're looking at with the Lakers, missing pieces, uh, things. It's, it's, it's to me. It's going to be same. really slow to develop in preseason. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard to say, but they did look good when they had LeBron and AD. They played the second game against the Suns. They yeah. still look good. They look good. LeBron and AD was killing it. AD shot looks good. He knocked down a couple of threes, but hell, that's just one game. But overall, they look the same. Okay. And that's not a good thing or a bad thing, but they look the same. It's all depending on how well you know that bench comes in. And I will say this, you know, they didn't have Gabe Vincent, Vincent last year. He looked he looked better. Um, uh, uh, Reddish looked good. So it's a, it's a lot of guys that uh, on that team that they were missing that's going to sure. help. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, um, let me ask you a question as we get on to our friends at DraftKings here. Uh, what was your all-time favorite touchdown celebration? Did you have one? Because I I remember uh, one when I was a kid. I, I you know what it's it's so weird. It's, I just like uh, was it Billy White Shoes Johnson? Oh my goodness, you're pulling them yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, that cow. was I, I think the, the oh, who was it did the wobbly legs like this holding the ball up like uh, just the wobbly legs. Uh, I don't remember if that was Billy. I remember the icky shuffle. Yeah, uh-huh. with the. The yeah. dance to both sides and like, mm-hmm. oh man, when I was a kid, we used to do the icky shuffle all the time just because it was like, oh, yeah, the dude's got his own dance. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for a long time Woo! here in Atlanta, man, we had the Dirty Bird. <laughs> yeah. The Dirty Bird was like, a, yeah. that, was a, that uh-huh. was a big deal in Atlanta, man. People mm-hmm. do the Dirty Bird a lot. Um, well, look, man, no matter how you celebrate touchdowns, they matter more to DraftKings Sportsbook. So uh, they are the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Yeah, we don't care how they score them. We want to bet on touchdowns. Touchdowns. Tutties, and Draft King Sportsbooks is delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to the Draft King Sportsbook app and make your pick. Yeah, no, they they make it count, man. And here's a celebration you're really going to love. New Draft Kings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. 200 Five bucks get you two hundred dollars <laughs> in bonus bets right away. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download it. That's what I'm saying. Download the Sportsbook app now and use code Big Shot Bob. Ooh. That's code Big Shot Bob for new customers to get two hundred and bonus bets when you bet just five bucks, baby. Five. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. So now that's the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It's a little different than the DraftKings app, so make sure you yeah. get the right one. And again, that code is Big Shot Bob. Two hundred dollars in bonus bets when you bet five bucks. Uh, here's Bye. the. I love it. Here's the legal <laughs> stuff we got to do. Uh, gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler in New York. Call eight seven seven eight Hope NY or text Hope NY. That's four six seven three six nine. In Connecticut, helps available for problem gambling at 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please pay resp- play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after insurance. Uh, after assurance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, visit dkng.co slash ftballl. There you go. I like it. Thank you. I have a gambling problem. Do you? I don't have no money to gamble with. You ain't got no gambling money. That's your problem. <laughs> That's your problem. That's your gambling problem. You ain't got no gambling money. Uh, you know why you ain't got no gambling money? Because you, sir, were probably like all Alabama fans, thinking uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna run over some Vanderbilt, right? Who who loses? If Alabama has lost to Vanderbilt in forty years. In 40 Let's throw years. some money on the tide. <laughs> and Vanderbilt, man, marching the goalposts <sighs> down Broadway in Nashville after they beat Alabama. Uh, hey, that was a, a tragic loss for Alabama. 
And, you know, you have, you know, the funny part, the coach had all these mouse traps around and said, this is a trap game. Trap game. All the, they got their asses trapped. And they, <laughs> they did. couldn't get out of it. They got they trapped. Couldn't stop, and, they but, couldn't stop the defense. I mean, the offense would save their life. I'm like, damn, this dude was running all over. I'm like, do y'all realize y'all played a Heisman quarterback? Now y'all playing a, a hopeful Heisman quarterback? Y'all just made him one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Oh, He's going to get drafted just off this game. <laughs> yes. You've made this kid, honestly, you made this mm-hmm. kid a mountain of NIL money. Yeah, you know who you reminded me of? Uh, what's the what's the guy who didn't get drafted? Came out of Texas A&M, Johnny Manziel. Oh, Johnny, Johnny reminded, Football. Yeah, that, that reminded me of the Johnny Manziel game where he just like destroyed Alabama. So oh that my you know, God, yeah. dude, he was all over the place. And then he they got him on the field after the game. I'm gonna I'm gonna play something else for you too from this game. Dude, <laughs> hey, they got uh, the guy's name's uh, Diego Pavia is the quarterback yeah. for Vanderbilt and his brother. They kept showing his brothers in the stands. Yep. Like everybody gonna be partying with them tonight. Yep. Everybody gonna be partying with them tonight. <laughs> so they got him on the field after the win. Diego, you just beat the number one team in the country. What's going through your mind right now? It's literally all God's timing. Literally from the jump, God gave me a vision when I was a little kid, and He don't let that. Any promises is it's God's time. Like, I'm super thankful. Super thankful for guys like Eli Sowers. Man, that kid's incredible. The rest of our team. Look at this. Look at this. Daddy, we're fucking tired. <laughs> <laughs> he went from that all the glory goes to God to Vandy. We fucking turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In one breath. <laughs> Hey, oh. All my friends would text like, "Man, you got beat by a bunch of fucking nerds." <laughs> <laughs> it was the it was the John Goodman speech in the locker room in Revenge of the Nerds. Y'all just lost to a bunch of nerds, uh, dude. It was, but I'll tell you, man. And mm-hmm. and there, this was like the weekend of upsets in college football. Oh yeah, Holy I even turned God. off the Miami game because I saw oh, they finna get beat too. Yeah, Miami's getting trounced. It was <laughs> yes. thirty five to ten to Cal. And they mm-hmm. come back and miraculously find a way to win that game. Twenty-one points in the fourth quarter. Oh my this god! Was a good weekend Four for straight college football. touchdown yeah. drives for Miami yeah. to get to win that. Dude, yeah. it was it was a, a wild weekend. Um, but, you know, back to the Alabama game. I yeah. think the pivotal point was Alabama. Was like, oh yeah, we gonna walk them down, and you can just tell how how lax what Melrose was when he got sacked and lost the ball. I've never seen him just sit in the pocket like that. I'm like, dude, that's not who you are. And next thing you know, my, you know my line. Nobody, I'm not being touched, and boom, bubble, and that was the end of the game. So, but it. it was just, but you know, the thing about this, I said a lot of times when you lose games like this, like Georgia, Georgia gonna beat the dog out of everybody else from oh. now on. And I still pick Georgia to win it, and then Bama's gonna just be like beat the dog out of everybody, but because they, they got tough schedules though, they both got of to. them. So yeah, they got yeah. to. And I mean, I'm I'm anxious to see how Georgia plays against Texas. Yes. Because I think Texas legitimately has a shot to run this thing this year. Mm-hmm. Um, they're too damn good. Uh, I mean, God, the Manning kid, even with uh, Quinn Yours out, this Manning yeah. kid's lighting people up. So I'm, I'm really, and they are, they are the number one team in the country, and justly so. Uh, I think, man, I think Texas has got a real legit shot uh, yeah. to, to run this thing. I and, do too. Texas, the, Texas is good. Texas, Texas is good. good, man. And yeah. th- I'll tell you what. College football is more fun when yeah. there's this kind of parody. When yeah. it's and when that, they're yeah. like teams are losing when they shouldn't <laughs> and things are close and Texas is good yeah. and what is going on? You know, that's oh, it makes it so much better. That's what I tell everybody. The SEC is going to kill themselves because you think about it, they got six teams that can literally, you know, be in the top 12. Oh, they're sure. going to knock each other out. And they're so gonna, it's going to be like, gonna, oh, yeah, they're going to cannibalize put them in each there. other. They're gonna, yeah. all going to cannibalize each other. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I just it's it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. But I had to get your thoughts on it. Where did yeah. you? Were you like? Is this the kind of loss that kicks you in the nuts and and you and you don't like it for a long time, or do you? Are you just let these roll off you? I just I mean, we just roll off. It's like it is another day in the SEC. That's what happens. That's you know, you true. Look at, it's going to be more because people don't understand. Vandy has been playing well all year. Yes, but you yeah. haven't lost to Vandy in forty years, yeah. man. Yeah, but but you know, hey, sometimes. It's time. <laughs> okay, it's a, it's you know, time sometimes it's time. But yeah, when, when you they, have, when you are Kalen DeBoer and you mm-hmm. are a new head coach and you are taking over arguably the most storied franchise in college football because you're taking over for Nick Saban. Yeah. 
and your and you first the year you lose to Vanderbilt. <laughs> you come and you come from the highs oh, to the lowest. God, you and beat Wallace, Georgia. All, you beat Georgia, then you lost to Vanderbilt the next Eight week. Eight days later, <laughs> dude, that is yeah. just that's the tale of two cities right there. Bro. Yeah. Shit's all right, crazy. why the beard looking exceptionally nice today? What you do, man? He's growing. You put back. some Grecian formula in it. Yeah, I'm moisturized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Harp is with us now. So uh, we we uh, to catch you up quickly, Harp. Uh, we talked about the fact that basketball's back. Uh, we talked a little bit about JJ Reddick still doing first take to the media, and uh, we danced on Alabama's grave a little bit. <laughs> to Rob's dismay. To Rob's dismay. Uh, by the way, if you want to buy uh, uh, any of the Vanderbilt stuff, you can buy like pieces of the goalposts that were in the river now. Apparently, seriously? Oh yeah, no, they're auctioning all the stuff off now. <laughs> Yeah, because they because they got fined for having fans on the field, so uh-huh. they got to pay a fine. They don't so, care. That'll uh, probably never happen again. Oh no, 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 no! Um, They're gonna ride that pony forever. They um, that might ruin Alabama's national title chances or playoff chances. Um, I, I don't know. It depends. Well, Let's see how they play it all the way through. Here's the thing: if they lose one more, maybe. Here's the thing: yeah. you lost, you lost the game that you're not supposed to lose. There are games that you're not supposed to lose. You're not. You ain't lost. Nick Saban ain't never lost to Vanderbilt. Oh no, we talked about the forty years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They zero and sixty versus teams that are versus ranked teams, and fifty of those losses have come by double digits. I, well, only only saving graces they have to win the SEC. If they they that's the only thing. They still got Tennessee. Tennessee got beat. Yeah, they did. That's fine, <laughs> but that don't mean Tennessee can't beat Alabama. Oh no! Anybody, everybody can beat Alabama. But what I'm that's what I'm saying. If you're if you're if you're Bama, <laughs> that should not you have be to the start, narrative. You have to start looking. You got to start looking at your schedule and say, "Look, dog, we lost a game that we ain't supposed to be. You ain't supposed to lose to Vanderbilt." Oh no, no, nobody is. And then that's not a shot at Vanderbilt. They're just they're not Alabama. They're not Georgia. They're not Tennessee. Those are games that those teams should not. Lose. Georgia but State know, beat Vanderbilt. Yeah. But here's the funny part about it: Alabama schedule. Is very favorable, you know. They 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 should be able to you know go out. You know, I, I know people are like, well, they got LSU. We don't really worry about LSU anymore. They got Tennessee. They don't really worry about Tennessee no, anymore. So. You can't say that. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, only no, game you really worry band. about. Only game you really worry about is the Auburn game. And no. Auburn's not ranked. But no, you always worry. It's a rival game. I understand that, but Auburn is the game. worst out of all those teams. Yeah, they really are. Like yeah, Auburn can't throw the Auburn can't throw the football. No, they can't. <laughs> like, so, Auburn, all Auburn do can run the. Where are they playing? Where are they playing Tennessee? At Tennessee, oh, hell in Tennessee, no. oh, hell in Knoxville. No. Oh yeah. hell no! What a- <laughs> no, here's, here's, they at Tennessee at LSU. And They're on at the Oklahoma. road to all those games. <laughs> oh no! Just like they were on the road at Vandy. <laughs> oh no! What are we talking about here? I love it. This is not yeah. Nick Saban. I love college. Nick football. Saban has never lost to Vandy. I love college football. When you follow the man, it. you have to continue the trend of the man. No, he, he's the, the fans are jumping <laughs> shit on the happen. door. Yeah, they're, no, they're but losing. what I'm saying is, it's one thing if you lose to Tennessee or LSU. They're ranked, and it's a major program. Vanderbilt is a D1 program, but not for football. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> this ain't even basketball. This is football. All the, all, the, all the Vandy guys play for the Knicks now. Isn't that, isn't that the thing? Isn't that the lineup now? I, I, I don't know. I, you lost the wrong game. Now you don't have a lot of room for error. You got no room for error. That game hurts you more than the Georgia game helps you. Sorry. That's true. That's true. That, Sorry. I, the only way that Georgia game would have helped you if you have blew Georgia out, which they didn't. They let them come back. And it just really it really shows something about Alabama's defense. If you can just slow the game down and keep the defense on the field. Because think about it, Melrose only had the ball, meaning the Alabama offense, for like nine minutes in the first half. They can't run the ball. Nine minutes. They don't want to run the ball. That's the problem. They can run the ball, but they don't want to run the ball. They don't do it enough. You, you can't do that. He had to understand this is the SEC. You got to run the ball. Oh, you got to. You, can, you, you control run the, the ball. clock with the yeah. run. You control the whole mm-hmm. offense with the run. And yeah. Alabama. You can, and, you run, and you run the ball for the simple fact that you give your defense time to rest. And control time of possession. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's, what, that's why that discrepancy was like 42 minutes to like 17 minutes. It was minutes. crazy, It yes. was a, I don't think I've ever seen that lopsided of a time of possession. Mm-hmm. I love college football. All right, let's uh, let's move let's move on to the next topic here because we were about to get into this when uh, when Harp <laughs> showed up. So uh, we brought up Doc Rivers earlier in the show, mm-hmm. and I want to play this clip of Pat Bev. So this is Pat Bev on his podcast. He's talking about they're talking about I guess the Bucks mm-hmm. being sort of short sold going into this season, and uh, 
Pat Bev takes a little bit of issue with the fact that we don't put enough respect on Doc Rivers' name. They trying to slander Doc. I don't know. I seen some coaching rankings. They had Doc 22, dog, almost through, through my fucking phone, dog. This man is Phil Jackson is Doc Rivers, man. They got to put more respect on my, my, my coach name. They got to. They got to, bro. It's getting, like, disrespectful. They, they wouldn't do Phil Jackson like that. Like, why are they doing Doc like that? It's wild. It's wild. It's really wild. <laughs> go ahead. There's a little perspective gap here, but go ahead. Yeah. I, I, Rob, you played Bill for Jackson. Phil. ain't never been up 3 1 and lost five, four times, wherever it been. So, and, and so it, I sent y'all that thing one time like, oh, when did you win coach of the year? Uh, my rookie season. Well, the last time you won a championship? Oh, like 12, 20 years ago. <laughs> and it's like, come on, man. You know, Doc, Doc has a great team. He has a great team. If he don't win this year, he probably would never get a coaching job again because you can't you can't keep putting out having these extraordinary teams like the Clippers and like this team and not win. You know, it, it, it's like you can only blame the players so much. It got to be something that's coming in from the coaching staff or what may be. But no, but then let's let's say this for Doc. He ain't no fucking Phil. Come on, Pat, stop that. You know, I know and Phil has played. Phil has had the greatest players ever to play for, but still though, he got those guys to play together and come together and win championships. So stop it. Stop it. I, I ain't listening to what Pat Bev got to say on this because I heard this and I just kind of <laughs> wrote off. It's something else that Pat Bev, and this is probably moving on to something else, but this is something else that Pat Bev has said, and I don't think Rob has this clip. Something he said recently about Ben Simmons, and he echoed, uh, I'm trying to find it, and it, mm-hmm. echoed the, it echoed everything we said, but the exact sediments that I I mean almost verbatim word for word that I have been talking about when it comes to Ben Simmons and if I can find it if Rob might, can find it, we gonna, find it we, oh my goodness I might be able to find it I, I saw I think I saw this and I don't know if I if I followed through on and it. I meant to say I said I got to send this to Rob and I never did what was the what was he talking about basically he was there somebody he was on a podcast you know because Pat Bev is playing overseas now Yep. And somebody had mentioned Ben Simmons and everything, and he was saying, nah, we ain't falling for that. We won't give a damn about them home videos you be making. We won't give a damn about you dunking and all the other stuff. You got to play, dog. We ain't seen you play in forever. Okay, here you go. Uh, here you go. This is about a minute. Hang tight. It's ben Simmons too. coming out with some new workout tapes. Ben Simmons. Hey, ben, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. <laughs> ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to hear that shit. I'm over here and I ain't trying to hear that shit. No, you got to show us, buddy. And you got to show us for at least 60 <laughs> some games, buddy. We ain't on that. I ain't trying to hear that shit. No, nah. no more talking. No videos on the court. I need to see it. He was like, people forgot I was a pretty good basketball player, right? Yeah, yeah I forgot. <laughs> that corny ass shit you told me that day. I go to a free throw line. Hey, Ed, what the fuck you do here? They booing the shit out of you. Hey, they booing me? I thought they was booing you, huh? That corny ass shit. All right, bro, whatever. So they, they must be booing you. I, corny ass nigga, man. Like, <laughs> you got to show me, buddy. But when he play, he be hooping. You just got to play. And he can't be ducking that smoke. He can't be ducking that smoke. If the, the lights get big, you got to get big with the light. Can't be ducking that shit. Motherfucker, leave you open. I ain't saying shoot 10 threes. I ain't saying shoot threes all the time. But motherfucker, impact the game. Ben Simmons. <laughs> so there you go. There's Pat Bev. I, there's not many things that he said that I ain't said about Ben Simmons over the last few years that we've had this podcast. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, the thing he said was wrong. <laughs> Nothing he said was wrong. Nothing he said was even out of line. It was just like, but yeah. th- But that's the but issue. It, it, it's, it, it's the thing is that everybody says that uh, about Ben Simmons. You know, we want to see the product. Don't, don't, we don't want to see you on the sideline. You know, we're tired of seeing you on the sideline for getting paid for 10 years. And we ain't seen you since. But everybody since know that, but Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but ben, look, ben, but what is Ben's job right now, right? He's he's his own PR machine. He's trying to remind people like, hey, I'm good. Hey, I like to play basketball. Well, I've no. been in a bad space for the last couple of years. He's the I'm most, ex- back. He's the most ex- expensive paperweight in, in the league, in the world. He's trying to save whatever bit of reputation he can, and he ain't got much of one left. No, nah, he's trying to save how much ever bench – he can save from flying up in the air. Yeah, well, that too. So. I, I don't. I, I'm. I'm just saying. I Ben Simmons is null and void to me until he actually yeah. laces him up right. and steps on the floor. And I, I agree. I think everybody agrees. Uh, I do want to give you the uh, odds to win Coach of the Year right now. Uh, Tom Thibodeau. Right now, your official betting leader from Bovada. Tom Thibodeau is plus eight fifty to win Coach of the Year. I'm going to give you the other uh, candidates on this list. 
Some of them kind of threw me. Coming in at number two, plus 900, Ime Udoka. I'm not surprised. Really? That team, they, he actually has a, they're young. They got a very but they young got a pretty dark, They got a couple of good big men down there. And so I'm not surprised to hear that. Okay. Yeah, they're very, they're very athletic, but at the end of the day, I, I think them, they, the young part is going to rear his ugly head. Yeah. Okay. Well, coach of the year doesn't mean, you know, hey, you got to no, have I know that, but I'm just saying, yeah. It's, it's what but you if do you start losing, you, you ain't going to win no coach of the year. No, 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 yeah. no, no. no, no. Uh, right behind him, tied for second, plus 900, Taylor Jenkins. Who is that? Who is the coach of <laughs> what team? This is, this is we're gonna rip this off from TNT. Who he coached we for? <laughs> we don't fucking know. Ta- hold on, Taylor who, Jenkins. Who he coached for? Taylor Jenkins. Um, I literally had to Google this. This gotta be a new coach. It is. Okay. That the Pistons coach? No. <laughs> this ain't the Bulls coach, is it? No. Oh, oh we're dude. striking out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know we get to a game this early. I know. Oh, it's the Charlotte Hornets. No, that's the black guy. Never. Mind. <laughs> no, no, he's coming up short again. No. Okay, is no. he in the East or the West? Uh, he is in the Western Conference. He's in the West. Hold on. Taylor Jenkins. In the West? Um, unless I am unless I don't have that right. But unless, I'm you don't have your ge- I do. unless you don't have your geography <laughs> right. I, maybe I don't. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck that is. In the West? I can tell you who won't win Coach of the Year. Who? The guy who uh, coached yeah, uh, West, okay, okay, uh, I thought it was crazy. Okay, the guy who coached OKC was his name Mark. I don't know how to pronounce his last. Oh, name. Oh him. Oh yeah. He he won't win Coach of the no, Year. He's not. He's he's way down on the list. Um, you know why? Because he never has been. It's never been a coach win back to back. So he ain't gonna win it. Because you usually you win the Coach of the Year, you get fired. It's Actually not the guy in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> the guy. Ask Marty, Marty Williams. <laughs> it's not Portland. It's not Portland. No. Mm, that's Chauncey. Yeah, that is Chauncey. Mm. That's right. Man, we are coming up way short on this. Uh, Taylor Jenkins. Utah? Who he, who he coached for. No. Is it Utah? Uh-uh. No, that's uh-uh. Who's in uh, – is Mike Brown still in Sacramento? Yes. He okay. is. Yeah. Yeah. Who the fuck is Taylor who Jenkins? Who is I don't know. <laughs> He's a head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they got a new coach? <laughs> yeah. Look at, a new coach. <laughs> Look at all of us just like I googled it because I was like who the fuck is Taylor Jenkins I'm like this is a made up name I googled it I was who like somebody that? made this up this is a joke I, I right? gotta, like, he's a head coach Taylor? of the Memphis okay. Grizzlies I can see you getting job back uh, yeah. I, I had no clue yeah I didn't know who that was I had was. no idea alright uh, oh, the bald head guy who looks like he should be on the football sideline. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. Go. Uh, all right, coming in next was Nick Nurse in Philly, uh, plus 1,000. Right next to him, Jamal Mosley. Who he coached for? He's in the East. I'll give you that. Okay. <laughs> these are, by the way, these are favorites to win coach of the freaking year. <laughs> And we're like, who is this? Uh, hold on. Jamal, Jamal Mosley. Who he coach he, for? Oh, he um Orlando. Ah, oh, there it is, there Robert Ory. Okay. Very nice. Orlando. Uh, he is the head coach of the Orlando mm-hmm. match. I had to think about it. Yeah, it's Orlando. Uh, coming up next behind him at plus twelve hundred. There's two guys tied. Chris Finch. Hey, let okay. me tell everybody in America, don't you put your fucking money on JJ Reddick. And JJ oh, Reddick. Oh, of course not. I would don't never you do that. JJ Reddick is right unless, there behind him. Unless you got a shit ton of money, don't put your money on JJ Reddick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Finch, by the way, head coach of? Um, that dumbass trade, Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. Timberwolves. Very nice. Good job. Don't put your money on Chris Finch don't. either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd put my money on Chris Finch before I would JJ Reddick. Uh, and I was going to say, on this list, though, who, who would you bet for? If you had to throw some money down, Thibodeau, uh, Ime, uh, Taylor Jenkins, Nick Nurse, Jamal Mosley, Chris Finch, J.J. Reddick, your top contenders. Who are you putting money on? I'm going to put mine on Ime. Okay. I'm, I'm putting mine on Jamal. Okay. Uh, Orlando going to be oh, sneaky. Orlando, yeah, yeah, Orlando yeah, could be yeah. good this year. Orlando could be sneaky yeah. good, Orlando man. Could, they, they, were, they were good last year. year. Yeah, That's right. they were sneaky yeah. good last year. Yeah. And they got uh, better defensively. They added um, okay. KCP. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to ride with the favorite. I hate the Knicks, but I'll put some money on Thibs. Thibs going to find a lot. He's going to find out a lot with uh, 
Cat. cat very soon. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and it's not that Cat is a bad player. He's just mm-hmm. not the player that y'all think he gonna be when y'all went to go get him. <laughs> well, everybody's looking at Cat from the Western Conference Finals last year, and that's who they that's who they wanted. And it's like I mean, he has his he has his moments, he has his bursts. Hey, they just don't know if they're gonna. Hey, we gonna get this cat. Are we gonna get this cat? I don't know. <laughs> See, God damn. what Tibbs <laughs> wants. God damn. What Tibbs wants is. He wants Steven Adams, and he wants that kind of toughness out of Cat. He ain't going to get that. That's probably not a fair estimation. Well, that's more of the uh, along the lines of the, when you start talking about rugged defense that Tibbs wants to play. The def- uh, Cat ain't playing that defense. I'm sorry. No. I, when, I, when they call is, him is Cat, assumption you got to put, put house in front of Cat. He's, <laughs> he's a house cat. He's a house cat. I like that. Pretty good. He ain't no jungle cat. No, 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 no. no. no he ain't been a jungle cat for a minute. Good dude, um, good ball player, but no. Oh, great guy, man. No, awesome yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, smart, yeah. intelligent guy. Yeah. Very good. But he just got, he just got to find that dog in him and start, you know, punching people in the mouth and, and put some fear in people's hearts. Well, who knows? Maybe spend a little time in New York, man. Maybe we're from Jersey, off. right? Yeah, maybe it rubs off yeah, on you. But you no. know, you get a little bit of those New York roots back, and yeah. Well, they always tell me there's a difference between Jersey and New York. There is. Okay. <laughs> there is. For example, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, all right, let's uh, let's do Caitlin Clark, one rookie of the year. Uh, yeah, did, of didn't sweep the vote. She uh, did? One, no, had one person that voted for Angel. I'm not surprised. Uh, but I honestly, I'm not. Because I, I think that, I mean, I, there was, until she got hurt. It was, mm-hmm. was kind of a, this could go either way for right. both of them, yeah. the way they were both playing exceptionally. Caitlin Clark finished the season 19.2 points, uh, 5.7 rebounds, 8.5 assists, and 1.3 steals a game. Reese's average was 13.6 points, 13 rebounds mm-hmm. a game average. Woo! Uh, 1.9 assists, 1.3 steals. So, uh, I mean, again, both exceptionally great mm-hmm. rookie seasons. Rob, let me ask really you this. Great season. Do you think, because I... I I know Candace Parker was on a uh, on D Wade's podcast, and mm-hmm. she was talking about in ways in which the, I guess the WNBA can improve. And she says, I guess, and I'm paraphrasing, she talked about the WNBA has to do a better job of being able to accept criticism of its players, because what we've realized, because what comes along with the eyes and the and the and the notoriety and the more money and the more endorsements comes more criticism of your players. We see it in the NBA all the time. And what we've seen this year is that, and I, what I've heard, anytime you criticize a player, people are quick to have an issue with it. It's not that you have a problem with that person because you don't know that person. And some people did have a problem with Angel and have a problem with Caitlin, and I understand there's some underlining things there. But – I think the the WNBA has to get used to being able to be criticized. Players have to be able to be criticized without always taking it personal because you can't have one side of the coin without the other. And I thought it was pivotal that she brought that up because I did see a lot of anytime someone would say something about Caitlyn, you have a whole bunch of people say something else. Anybody say yeah. something about Angel, you have a whole people talk, oh, you're just a hater, blah, blah, blah. And it's not a hate towards them personally. But I can look at their game and value and say, hey, she needs to get better in this area. We do it all the yeah. time in the NBA. And exactly. I think that's what needs to be improved over time if the NBA, wa- the WNBA wants to be able to have and turn this league into what they've envisioned it to be. Uh, I, you know, I, I agree with it because I think the, the, the more you get noticed, the more you're going to get criticized. Because now that, and to me, that's a good thing because that means people are watching. Right. Back in the day, they didn't criticize you. Why? Because they weren't watching you. And now you got this spotlight on you and everybody said, okay, you have this spotlight on you. Now you're going to shine. Now I'm watching you. Oh, you need to do this, this, and this. And it's not really, it's, it's you know, criticizing, critiquing. You got to be, hey, this is what comes with the territory. You know, it's a famous line. You knew the job was dangerous when you took it. And so many people want to play sports and not get criticized for it. And, you know, you get paid for playing the sport. I get paid for criticizing. And so that's how they have to look at it. And they got to understand this is a dangerous territory when you step into professional athletes. You go, people are seeing you. They watch you from the minute you wake up to the minute you walk in the arena with your fits and want to be viewed. Say, hey, look at my fit. That's why you wear the fit. And then you get on the court. So they're going to view you and they're going to criticize you from, from what you wear, from what you say, and how you act. That's been happening across the border in sports and every everywhere, everywhere you go. And so I think for them, they got to understand that criticize me all you want. I don't give a shit because 
you're not my mom, you're not my kids, you're not my sister, my brother, whatever it may be. Those are the ones I care about what they say. You, that's your job to criticize me and it comes with the territory. And that's what they got to understand. Be happy because that means they're watching. Yeah. Yeah, they're paying attention. Mm -hmm. uh, follow my stepfather's rule. Don't take criticism from people you wouldn't turn to for advice. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> exactly. So let all the chirping heads and the talking heads like us idiots say whatever we want because it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. We don't have any impact on what you do. But you're right, Rob. means there's eyes on the game. Mm -hmm. uh, have you checked in with uh, with your boy Jack? I, I left him alone. Dude, him and, <laughs> I left him alone. Him and Manny were getting chirpy during. Yeah. Uh, we're moving to baseball a little bit here, but uh, <laughs> Dodgers Padres the other night. Getting heated. That's mm -hmm. got hot. Uh, yeah. Dude, it was mm -hmm. fun. Uh, Jack and and Manny just straight yelling at each other. Machado yeah. at third, and Jack yelling at him from the dugout after he struck him out. And oh god, dude, it was a. Uh, yeah. And then the, and then we get the fans throwing shit on the field. That's which, I heard about that. Which I hate yeah. because we had to deal with it in Atlanta in 2012 during the the Cardinals game when they yeah. they called the infield fly and it wasn't even in the infield and fans went nuts and threw all that garbage on the field and they had to stop play for like a half hour. Yeah. I hate that crap. Like don't do that. Yeah. Like just because just, it makes your fans look bad. It makes it the right. Look it just bad. paints such a bad stop picture, it. man. Dude, knock yeah. it off. But yeah, because uh, you, you think cow. about with the Dodgers fans, they've gotten so many troubles where they got into fights with old people in the parking lot. They got so <laughs> much, yeah. you know. Clean it up, dude. You're not the Raiders. Clean it up. Stop being this. Show some maturity. So, hey, okay, y'all beat us. You know, you think about that. Watching that game. But they got beat the good, Padres, That wasn't. The Padres made, like, four exceptional catches. Mm -hmm. You got to take – you tip your hat. You know, the Mookie home run, the run down in the, in the right field, and, you know, the, 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 oh, the double play ball down the first baseline. It was so many things that happened in that game. You just, oh, fuck, tip your hat. Yeah. And it, it just – just say, yo, we lost the game to a team that played better than us, you know. But they can't get down three get three runs every damn game and expect Otani or someone to come up, come and, and bail them out. That yeah. series tied at one, or yeah, is it, it is okay, one to one for the first. I think for I think I saw this for the first time in the history of uh, the National League Division Series. All the series are tied at one apiece because this is the best out of five. Yes, it is. Yeah, best out of five. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're all tied at one. All tied at and one, and that never happens. Uh, but yeah, no, the the pro far. <laughs> The catch and everyone thought it was a home run and he turned I know around. It. Dude, that was a good job, man. Because he had every they were running the graphics on TV and the whole shit. Yeah. Uh, that was that was funny. Uh, but that man, was real funny. Dude, the and Mookie was like Mookie was celebrating. I know, and then he was like, "Oh shit!" Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, man, mm -hmm. man, that's my bad. Uh, but yeah, dude, I, we gotta we gotta if if the we, we gotta have Jack back on soon here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think obviously that will depend on how the Dodgers how far go. They go. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, they continue to advance. He's not gonna be available, but. Um, once once they uh, once they're out, if they win a title, definitely. Uh, but we'll see. And then uh, yeah, I, got, I I really watch baseball like until the playoffs, and uh, you know. But I really got to watch. Dude, I love the Phillies playoffs, Mets series, man. Dude. That's that's been a good series. You're talking about too. the Phillies Mets series. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm. they are they're throwing slugs at each other, man. That that Alonso yeah. home run was no joke, dude. <laughs> yeah, in division. the ninth. Oof, oof. Yeah. Uh, and I look, man, I got no love for the Mets. So, uh, and I got no love for the Phillies. I ain't got no love for neither one. I downloaded a meme the other day that was a picture of a guy holding up a sign that just said, can both teams lose? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel about that series. I'm like, yeah. can they both lose? Is there a way? Yeah. I don't know. For yeah. all I care, y'all can beat the hell out of one another. Man. <laughs> I really do not care. Go crazy. We'll, yeah. we'll stand over here taking pictures. Right. We're the meme of the guy taking pictures while they're beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, quick audio of the week, then we're going to do Big Shot, and then uh, the game, the game of the week for good reason is going to be Walmart or Waffle House. And I'm going to explain why in just a few minutes. Mm. Uh, audio of the week. Uh, credit to the referee. He's excited for basketball season. I think he lost oh. track of the fact <laughs> that he was officiating a football game. The Bills were looking for a late hit. After crew discussion, the runner was out of bounds before he fumbled the basketball. Oh. The ball be placed at the 39-yard line. Okay. It is a first down. <laughs> it's almost basketball season, and I will say for Clay Martin, yeah. he's been a longtime basketball coach at Jenks High School in Oklahoma. He's now the AD there. So we're going to give Number him the moment. He's in preseason. Uh, yeah, he fumbled the basketball out of bounds right. in the middle of the Bills game. Okay, yeah, sure. All right. well, we, we knew what he Good meant. Job, buddy. It, I know it, what he meant, but it's yeah. just great to hear somebody say that on an open mic and not even flinch and just yeah. keep going. Yeah. Like, at least the fact that they knew his history and who he was. Oh, he's yeah. a basketball coach. At yeah. least at least it was the ball that he fumbled. Like, we knew, <laughs> and like it, at least it wasn't some yeah. basketball call that was like, wait a minute, dog. Oh, that's not traveling. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you just called traveling on Josh Allen out of bounds? What the fuck is that? 
Uh, all right, big shot of the week is going to go to a gentleman named David Jones. Here's why. Uh, David's daughter was getting married last weekend in Tennessee. Uh, David Jones drove his car seven hours from South Carolina until he couldn't get any further due to the flooding and all the destruction. And dude got out and walked five and a half hours I on saw foot. That. 30 miles yeah. through Hurricane Helene debris to get to his daughter's wedding in Tennessee. Wow. 30 miles of walking to get there and got there for his daughter's wedding. He said, look, man, you got to understand my daughter's getting married at 11 o'clock this morning and I'm going to get down there to take her down the aisle one way or another. 30 miles. Man, when's the last time you walked 30 miles? Never. Ever? <clears throat> last time I was at Disney, maybe? Ten, like day, I, 10 days in a row, he walked three miles around the Rose Bowl, but that's about oh it. Oh, God, no <laughs> way, dude. Uh, but anyway, big shot of the week to David Jones. And continued thoughts and prayers for uh, everybody that's dealing with that. not yeah. only the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, because North Carolina's in trouble, but now this damn Hurricane Milton. Category 5 now. Coming in off the... Uh, yeah. The coast of Florida, uh, Tampa, St. Pete, Sarasota, Sarasota, Fort Myers. If you are in the evacuation zone, mm-hmm. I lived in Florida for ten years. Mm-hmm. Get the hell out! Yeah. If you are anyone that's that's inland, Orlando, because it's it's it, oh, it's it may weaken when it goes across. over land, yeah. but it's coming straight across. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna right. make landfall as a four or a three, and it's gonna exit Florida on the other side still as a category one. one. Yeah. So you're, you're you're talking about a major major hurricane across all of Central Florida. Yeah. Please be safe if you're listening to this and you're inside. Please 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 take the proper precautions. Man. Yeah. And you're seeing what's happening in North Carolina, man. It's like you can't you don't know how bad it's going to be. Everybody so I survived a hurricane before. It's not like, the hurricane. Oh, it's the it's the yeah. flooding. It's the storm it's surge. The storm it's surge. Yeah. that's what. Yeah. That's it's the, the, it's the possible happen. tornadoes that come yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah, just just look at what's in North Carolina. All those people are trying to, you know, they putting their stuff on the curb and stuff like it's that. Terrible. So you know, they didn't. They just got rain and flooding. You about to yeah. get everything: right. rain, flooding, yeah. wind, yeah, t- I mean, tornadoes. Ash- Asheville's yeah. in shambles mostly because of, fl- of flooding, and that's yeah. really it. It had nothing, very little to do with the actual hurricane itself. Mm-hmm. So uh, take it yeah. from when we was in Houston, we had that flooding. You it know, yeah, like, you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Be careful, you man. Know. That's all I'm you saying. Can't just control please, that water. Please, water please. gonna go where it want to go. No goodness, no. All right, so uh, the Falcons had a big, big Thursday night win last week mm-hmm. against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Yep. Uh, Kirk Cousins throws the game-winning touchdown, and of course, because he had the big moment, he goes on the Dan Patrick Show Friday morning. He calls in to Dan Patrick from the parking lot of a Waffle House, <laughs> which everybody in Atlanta was like, he's one of us now. <laughs> the morning after a big game, Kirk Cousins is at the Waffle House with his kids, uh, which absolutely brings us to this week's edition of Walmart or Waffle House. It's too good to do it. We couldn't skip it. And uh, shout out to Kirk Cousins, because that was a hell of a comeback drive. For the Atlanta Falcons. All right, I got seven stories. Very simple. It's up to you guys to tell me if the uh, incident happened at a Walmart or if it happened at a Waffle House. We'll start with story number one. Uh, there's a lot of entertaining people, lots of crowds of entertaining people, no matter where you are at either location. But when one particularly good-looking woman catches the eye of an employee, he discreetly, discreetly offers her $200 straight cash to, quote, bounce that sweet ass on his lap. An employee <laughs> to a customer. Uh, according to the police report she filed later, subsequent to his arrest. That's what he said to her. Uh, did that happen at a Walmart or did it happen at a Waffle House? Bounce that sweet ass on my lap. Bounce that that sounds like some stuff that $200 happened. $200 straight cash. <laughs> that sounds like that happened at a Walmart. Because that's not like an old dude. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Those greeters. He sounds like a greeter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Wait going a minute. To your, your assumption is a Walmart greeter on her way into the store. Oh, hold up. Cuts off two hundred dollars <laughs> straight cash. Yeah. But okay. you think about it, as a greeter, you standing, you can see her coming from the parking lot. Yeah. Oh and yeah. So as soon as she walked through those double doors, I'm like, yeah, yeah, girl, bounce that sweet ass on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Got two bills that says you can make that happen. All right, so everybody's going Walmart. Yeah, Walmart all right, Walmart. everybody is completely wrong. That happened wow. at the Waffle House. Yeah, damn, that was a Waffle House chef. <laughs> See, I, would, I was, that's man. You know, when I retire, retire, retired, I'm gonna become a greeter at Walmart just so I can say that. Come here, girl. <laughs> well, I mean, yo, big six ten behind him going back, going ain't going from going to work to go doing some more work at Waffle. I mean, at Walmart, ain't no way in the hey. world. 
it's you know when you get older man you just want to see people and talk to people and be happy that you can see them because you know you ain't gonna be seeing people if you just, if you want to see everybody <laughs> just stand up <laughs> like, uh, i can't wait to see that story hit my feed <laughs> walmart greeter robert ori molests uh <laughs> oh my god no why you gotta say molest Jesus, oh, yeah, yeah. what do you how do you where do you classify that <laughs> no diddy man come on no Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> offered two hundred dollars straight cash to bounce that oh, ass oh uh, come on speaking now. of that it's funny y'all brought it up before we move on did y'all see michael irvin on the sideline. Oh, uh, uh, doggy style. Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see his comment? No. His no. comment was, yeah, I bent that thing over, but we got that win. I <laughs> 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 love Michael Irvin. Man, what a character he is. Holy cow. Mm. Dude, he was at, he was at, he was like, it was like when uh, Sigourney Weaver turned into the dog from Ghostbusters. Yeah. He was like on all fours, just like raring on the sideline. And he, and he was arching his back. I'm like, oh, bro. Dude, he was, yeah, he was going through it, man. I don't know. He on that good powder. He <laughs> might make <laughs> on that good because there's good. nothing that causes that for that. That, 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 that ain't goodies. It's something else, man. I don't know what he got. As well. uh, all right. Number story number two. Uh, police were called to this location after a couple entered the establishment without pants. No underwear. No shorts. Nothing but their bare ass bottoms and full frontal appendages just dangling for the world to see. They were both arrested <laughs> for indecent exposure. No pants. So did you say on a shirt? No, I had on shirts, hat on tops. No pants. No underwear, no shirt. No underwear, no pants. Just being dick dangling, right? Just here. just 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 <laughs> dangling, just hanging. It's gotta be Walmart. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think, yeah, I think that's a Walmart, too. I All think right. at some Waffle House, you're able to get away with that. All right. Unfortunately. <laughs> at a Waffle House, you can get away with no pants and your sausage hanging out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you're both riding Walmart, and this time you both get a point. Yeah, because yeah, they're yeah, they a little bit more lenient, at, unfortunately, at Waffle House <laughs> than some of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, hey, man, I don't want to see your sausage while I'm eating sausage. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> scatter, smother, and cover it. That's yeah. all I need. Please, thank you. <laughs> God's sakes. Uh, all right, story number three. It was a tale of two cultures in the parking lot of this establishment after a large African-American man approached some people outside and said, Y'all fuck with rap music? <laughs> to which the skinny young white ginger of the group shouted back, Country music only, asshole! <laughs> and thus started a huge parking lot fight that police had to come break up. That sound like a... Did, did this happen in the parking lot of a Walmart or a Waffle House? That sound like it can happen in either one of them. Yeah. Y'all fuck with rap music? I think per go perfect house. cold open, by the way. Start mm -hmm. a conversation with somebody. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna go... Mm. I'm gonna go Waffle House with this one. Dang. I'm gonna go. Mm, I'm, a I'm hesitant, but I'm gonna go Waffle House. You're both going Waffle House. Again, you both ride and you both get a point. Yeah, it's a Waffle House. I can yeah. see that happening at a Walmart. Well, too, and you know, the Waffle House parking out a little more intimate. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little smaller. But I can see some of them. Hey, y'all fuck with rap music? I can see them <laughs> hollering across the. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna start starting conversations with that just at the office. <laughs> Walk up. Oh, excuse me. Y'all fuck with rap music? No? <laughs> All right. Story number four. It's not unusual for any story in this game to start with a man gets punched in the mouth by another man, but this story takes a fun turn when the man who got punched in the mouth lost his gold tooth, and a hands and knees search ensued. Eventually, the tooth was recovered. So, fight breaks out, man gets punched, loses his gold tooth, everyone down on the floor to find it. Happens at a Walmart or a Waffle House. I figure if he lost his tooth, it'd be really easy to find in a, in a Waffle House. Okay. So, he probably just picked up, he went at the look. You said he eventually found, so I'm going to go at a, a Walmart. Okay. His gold tooth. Yeah, we're on the same page again. Okay, you both <laughs> ride again, and you both... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Mm. I hit the wrong button. Are incorrect. No, yeah, that happened at Waffle House. That's a Waffle House. Mm. Yeah. Hands and knees, man. Don't let that get swept up with the Waffle House trash. Uh, <laughs> all right, story number five. Uh, I think we can all agree that blackface, blackface is frowned upon in today's culture. So we're not really sure how to handle a homeless man who covered his face in barbecue sauce and was sent away from this establishment because he was, quote, just looking for someone to lick my face clean. 
What? This man lathered his face up with barbecue sauce, looking for someone to lick it off him. Inside of a Walmart or a Waffle House? Walmart. Oh, Harvest Ride and Walmart. I'm going I'm to go Waffle House because <laughs> he's saying, lick my face clean, you'll soon, and everybody's hungry, so here. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you, man. If you've been to a Walmart, they're all hungry. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. Uh, the point goes to... Robert Ori. Uh, that was a Waffle House. Very good. Listen to the clues, John. I like it. Uh, all right, story number six. Police were called to the parking lot of this location after one man shot another man. Then the wounded man proceeded to beat the crap out of the armed man, taking his weapon away and holding him at gunpoint until the police arrived. Wow. So this Damn. dude got shot and then beat the crap out of the other guy, took his gun from him, and held him and at didn't gunpoint. Shoot him? No, held that's, him at gunpoint until the police arrived. That's some self control. That is some. Yeah. That's style I points. I shot his ass man. least in, in the kneecap. <laughs> so he walked with a limp. I don't know. The story was unclear about where he got shot, but obviously he had enough with him uh, to be able to fight this guy off. Happened in the parking lot of a Walmart or a Waffle House? Walmart. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Walmart. Everybody's riding Walmart. <laughs> Everybody gets a point. That was a Walmart. Yeah, that was outside of a Walmart. I got news for you, man. The brute strength of somebody to come back and fight you after getting shot? Dude, yeah. forget it. I'd be crying. All right, story if number seven. You shot at, shot at a uh, Waffle House, you're going to keep getting shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> usually drunk. stop. Yeah. All right, uh, last story. Uh, returns. Take backs, they happen at both places, right? Walmart gets all kinds of weird returns. Customers send food back all the time at a Waffle House. One location, though, the words were uttered, quote, I'd like to return this because there's a human finger inside it. Did that happen at a Walmart or did it happen at a Waffle House? Walmart. I was going to say Walmart, too, because it just seems too obvious to be a Waffle House. <laughs> You're both riding Walmart, and you're both going to close it out with a point. It was a Walmart. It was a food processor. Dude. Oh, dude. If human finger inside of a food processor, that, must, that wasn't pureed? That, I, I don't ooh. know how that happens, but... Uh, somebody, I guarantee you they sued Walmart, too, for that. I'm sure they did. Mm -hmm. And we're really hoping it was a finger. We're really hoping it was a finger. You sure you want a sausage? <laughs> it was, yeah, no, God, no, please, no, please, no. I don't need the visual of a food processor and a man's sausage. I'm thank you very much for that. That's a way to end the show.